going to be showing you how I have adapted my newly purchased toolboxes that I showed in my quilt room tour, my updated quilt room tour, but I'm going to show you how I converted that to my ironing station. If, you've, if you have done anything similar, please be sure to tell me about it in the comments below. Now, I've moved my ironing station over uh, a little bit. It's out of its typical spot, but I wanted to be sure to be able to film this a little bit better. So this is what my ironing station looks like. And I absolutely love it. One of the big things, one of the best things I like about it is that it is on wheels and I can easily move it all around my quilt room. This being on wheels is excellent. As you can see, it's just so easy to move and I can move it wherever I want. If I want to press a large quilt uh, or a quilt top, I can just move it away from the wall. Then I have all the area back here for the quilt when I'm pressing. Now here are some of the accessories. Here I just have one of those magnetic hooks. I can't even pull it off, that magnet's so strong. But I like to put my one of my tape measures right there. Okay, so I want to show you what's on this end. First of all, this is a little holder and I like to put my it right there and it holds my spray bottles. I really really like that. This hook holds my sticky roller and I love to use my sticky roller to clean off my ironing board when it gets all those pieces of thread all over it. This little hook, I love these colorful hooks. Um, let me see if I can pull one off. Oh, there we go. I love these colorful hooks and I have several of them and those just go on there and here I have a little uh, just my little snips so when I need to cut threads and then this tray down here is also magnetic and it holds my best press um, this has uh, one of my another tape measure in it and just my little container that I use to fill my iron but those all fit nicely here and then there is this electrical uh, my plug-in cord that is magnetic that also goes on the end and I, I just this this ironing station is just so handy now on the back I have two of these positioned so that I can get the cord up off the floor and the cord just lays across those so that it's not all over the floor now I want to give you a close-up of what's in the drawers. This is my favorite drawer. Now back here I just have a, a container for jelly rolls. It wanted, they, I couldn't get them all to fit in my other toolbox. But here I have my most frequently used smaller rulers. Now I've shown you before how I use a um, binder to keep my specialty rulers, but these aren't really specialty. These are just smaller rulers that I use all the time. Now over here, I just put my clappers in there and they're just so handy. I also use my, um, oh, what is this called? My hot ruler. I put that in here and then I also put my strip stick that I use to press seams open and that's in there and then I just have a couple of uh, my spinning rulers are in there. That's my favorite drawer. It is so handy to store my clappers and my hot ruler right there. Now down in the bottom this this contains the majority of my pre-cuts. I think the majority of my pre-cuts are here. labels there. Now these are all of my kits. I don't have very many kits. I do have a few. Here are a few more down in here. 
Here are some more of my panels that want to fit in the binders. Here's some panels and some more pre-cuts, and then more pre-cuts. But I like having all my pre-cuts in one place. Now I want to show you how I made the ironing board cover, or the ironing board. As you can see, the only thing that's between the board and this is that non-slip shelf material that you can get at Walmart. Now this right here is just a piece of a quarter inch plywood and this comes in sheets. Now Wes cut this for me but you can if you don't have somebody to cut it for you or if you don't know how to cut it I wouldn't know how to cut it. I don't know how to use those power tools but you can ask the lumber yards to cut it for you and they will make the cuts for you. It may cost you just a little bit more but they will cut it for the size that you need. On Underneath the silver stuff, I used a 100% cotton batting, and then I used that uh, Insel Bright. I think that's what it's called. It's that thermal uh, batting that you can use for like hot pads and stuff. So I put the cotton, the 100% cotton down first, and then I put the thermal, um, the, Thermalite, Insel, Bright, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but I put that on top of the cotton. And then this was um, just the stretchy silver stuff that I got years and years ago to make a big board. And I just cut that up and uh, just stapled it on there. Now, when this gets yucky, I'm simply going to staple a nice 100% cotton fabric over it. And that's all I'm going to do. And every time it gets dirty and yucky, that's what I'll use. Now this is held up pretty nicely, so I'll continue to use that. And then this right here is just that non-slip shelf paper that you get at Walmart. And I just um, put it down there to fit on top. Now when I'm pressing, that does not move around. Uh, and it doesn't cause any type of problem with moving around whatsoever. I do like to pre keep my pressing station up against the wall, but the wheels on this toolbox do lock and they're good brakes. So I could, I could iron with this anywhere. But there you have it. If you have any additional tips or tricks with um, modifying things to turn them into ironing stations, be sure you include that in the comments below. And until next time, have fun quilting.